The Broncos have loaded the bases with one out for the third time in four innings. The tying run is at third. That's Matt Manscar. The winning run is on second. That's, on, that's Ryan Knowles. Lopez slices this one. Does it drop? No! And for the second time in two innings, it's just foul. Again, a deep fly ball should tie this game. You'd love the game-winning hit, but just need the run. It's a long, painful strike one. It's chopped to the right side. The Broncos are going to tie the game. It's an RBI ground out. But the Broncos are on the board. First baseman, number 18, Brennan McKenzie. And the Broncos can win it here or we go to extras. Velasquez is off the hook. On the other side for Cal State LA, Saxon Andros cannot win this game. It's an RBI ground out for Cesar Lopez. It was never going to be a double play ball. I am shocked that they are pitching to Brennan McKenzie. He means nothing, and there's a base open. They are willing to pitch to him with Drew Cowley on deck. It's an interesting move. The last time a team did this for the Broncos, it was that Ryan Knowles walk-off in the first game of the season with a base on or the base open, Runners on second and third, and two men out. They pitched to him, and Knowles made him pay. Can McKenzie do the same? The Broncos have tied this game. After eight scoreless innings for Cal State LA, the Broncos finally tie this one up. And the winning run stands on third. This one gets away! And the Broncos gonna win it, yes! Oh, it's ridiculous! A walk-off wild pitch! Because how else would this game end? Peterson, Liggins, Henderson, trying to find peace in the post, and it's gonna go out of bounds, last touch by Smith. First time we've seen Q Van Hook into the game. You, the 5'9 senior from San Diego, originally by way of Palomar College, but obviously being from San Diego, well familiar with Point Loma. Inbounds pass to trigger from Henderson. Peace got a step. Catching goes straight up. Peace misses the first, misses the second. And catching, they're going to go this one against Manira Peace and catching unhappy. Sea Lions foul, number 24, Manira Peace. Second, second foul called on Peace. First foul of this second quarter against Point Loma. 27-16 Broncos. Seven and a half to play until we hit halftime. Broncos were excellent in the first quarter. Still trying to hit their stride in the second. Ricketson, that is a beautiful step through. It had a little bit of a look of a travel, but it was such a long stride that it was essentially that step-through move, which is legal. And Ricketson continues her high level of play. Liggins, Henderson, Dotson has shut down Liggins or Peterson, whoever's been matched up with her. Been giving them fits. Turk from the corner. Rebound to Ricketson. Doesn't have the numbers. Pulls up. And hits the jumper. She's just out there having fun. Sometimes you see a player come off of a serious injury. They play timid. Other times they're playing with a freedom. Like no longer do they take advantage or take for granted the idea that they can just play basketball at such a high level. You get that serious injury. It really brings everything into perspective and you play with so much more urgency, so much more freedom as well on the floor because it's just fun at this point for Jackie Ricketson and she is playing 
at the highest level that she has played in the green and gold and doesn't have the numbers in transition, doesn't care, pulls up in the mid-range and tickles the twine. It's going to be interesting. Broncos certainly have the talent, but they need to find a way through. Oliveira trying to have that angle to curl it with the right, got it back on the left, shot was blocked. And Villalobos commits the foul. Player is down for Monterey Bay, and there will be a little bit of gamesmanship, you can assume as well, going into the later stages of this one. Everyone out there for the Otters is going to try and find a way to spoil as much time as possible. That's Adrian Remeljar. He assisted on the lone goal of the game. Got away from the defender, was able to chip the ball into the six and slammed home by Walmer Martinez. That is the difference in the ball game. And the Broncos, who came into this game, three points, and they guaranteed a top two spot. A draw today and a draw against Sonoma State would do the same. Obviously, a draw and a win against the Seawolves would also get them into the top two. So needing one result from their final two games, but... On paper, would have thought that you would have had it here. Monterey Bay is playing at an extremely high level. And they have disrupted everything that the Broncos have wanted to do. And again, referee Nathan Max is... He's not dealing with any kind of crap right now. He's... Every single time he sees the Otters trying to do some kind of time wasting, he's going to stop the clock. And you can certainly assume that any heavy challenge for either team is going to be met by a yellow card because he cannot let this game descend into absolute chaos as Syme makes a beautiful sliding challenge on Villalobos. Oliveira cutting through the midfield. Feria, Villalobos on the outside looking for a teammate. Cut out by Syme again. This one... Back heeled by Nathan Max trying to get out of the way. Omer Green, Feria, is this the one? No! And it's Lamelli again! Also there in defense was Josh Marquez. Wasn't sure if it was Marquez's outstretched foot or Lamelli's outstretched foot that got the save. Either way, we're still 1 0. Not anymore! Zero! It's magic! They play it quick. Lamelli is asking Nathan Max. I'm not sure for what, but Ciro Oliveira, he tees it up with the right foot and teases it into the back of the net. 1-0 in the second half. 1-1 overall. And now it's a brand new game. And the Broncos back on top. Zimmerman. Heiner Falefa into the block and out of play nice block up front by Wilder she has had the best third set of anyone on the Broncos a couple of kills a couple of blocks this one goes wide again and the Broncos having fallen behind quickly take four straight points and reclaim what is now a three-point lead. Zimmerman. Nice sliding dig by Kiner Falefa. Sherbert. Wilder pokes it over. Broncos reset the defense. Wilder setting up on the right side. Another block inside. This one goes over. Diamond. Zimmerman. Still Diamond. Still Zimmerman, Wilder, Kiner Falefa says no way. Hit over, Zimmerman pokes it, Wilder kills it. Huge point in this match. Got two huge blocks from Jane Woodward. The big number eight in the middle, 6'3 junior from Portland, Oregon. Had two huge blocks in that point. And Allie Wilder. Gets a pivotal kill. 
Zimmerman, flat serve. Parrish nearly kept it alive. Zimmerman lays out for it, but cannot get a hand on it. But the Broncos reclaim their lead and now have a 15-12 lead. Back to serve for the Silver Swords is Enos. Mentioned just a couple of players that played Cal Poly Pomona before. She didn't play any significant points in that first one, being just a freshman, now a senior. And seeing the Broncos again. Lift called. Broncos not disputing that one. And it's 13-15. Shamanon serving. Serve over the top. Sherbert, Zimmerman, Parrish. No. Well blocked. Wilder tries to go short. This one hit over. Sherbert got caught off guard. Parrish, she's not going to miss two. First one in into the block. Second one off the right side of the block. And sprays out and down. 13-16. 